Jesus, stop it with all the fucking suspense. <gasps> Shit, I knew it. It's all green. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. We will find Marco Naros and collect a $20 million bounty on his head. Oh, shit. A bounty. Marco defeated Clay's Ashford. The ghost knife himself. No, he didn't. Ashford had one ship. We have three. We do this, then we earn the lasting respect of the other factions. And the bounty will sustain us for years to come. So we will do it. Polyam Beltifam is having second thoughts. Duru Freed. Tamia and Bedasto Duru. Employees of record. Family business. And moonlights and kidnapping. Who says belters are hard up for jobs? Oh, fuck him. Oh, shit. Dead end, literally. Teaching at the war college while on active duty? I mean, uh, he's some kind of big wig in logistics, isn't he? Sounds like you're more interested in him than me. But I have to be up early shipping out in the morning. That's a shame. Where are you headed out? Nope, nowhere, just a routine supply run. Oh, on what ship? The Barkeith. I do not trust her at all. Not even remotely. Hey, you're Alex Kamal, right? <laughs> Guilty as charged. Why do I? <gasps> oh, shit! Son of a bitch! like you want to know about Admiral Sovater. Oh. If he's really selling weapons to the Belters. <laughs> oh, shit. You been talking to anyone else about this, sweetie? <laughs> My friend, Bobby Draper. Okay. She's coming. Shoot him. Oh. Well, no, I think that's a mistake. Hey, Alex. Yes! Yes! Now let's ask her some fucking questions. They were trying to rob him, officer. Yeah, right. That's what they were asking me <laughs> to give them my valuables. And you just happened to drop by. That's right. Lucky for me. Hi. <laughs> One of the former Navy petty officers, dishonorably discharged. For what? Theft of military hardware? Oh. They're just a couple bottom feeders. We'll take it from here. Confirmed. Confirmed. Mm. Looks like we shook the right tree. Yes. Yeah, well, the trees ain't supposed to shake back. <laughs> what did you learn from Babbage? She's not really into me. <laughs> well, on the side or not your type. If Babbage is on a supply run, her ship could easily be full of weapons. This could be a very big deal. We'll take the razor back out and keep our scopes tight on the bar, Keith. Any ships they encounter, we get visual IDs and drive signatures and send the lot to Ava Sorala. We could flush out their entire smuggling chain. Mars to belt. Unless they spot us. Razorback's got no guns. Well, it has one hell of a sneaky pilot. <laughs> this is not the homecoming I was expecting. We are not a homebody. Let's go prep this ship. All right, I'll meet you there, okay? I'm gonna grab a few things just in case. Okay. What? Oh, the power suit. It's not about revenge, it's about money. A good opportunity for all of us. Is it though? You Is haven't it? had a family in a long time. You don't have to hide your grief from me or from anyone. Not anymore. 
when Ashford left to hunt Marco. He asked me to be his exo. I declined. I gave him this bottle as a send-off, but he told me to hold on to it. He said we'd drink it together when he returned. If you'd have gone with Ashford, you would have suffered the same fate. Maybe not. Could have been two of them. They could have sh Or maybe this bottle would be empty. And your pain is bringing you back to who you were before. Hard, looking for violence. But there are better ways to grieve. Stay with me. I will. This is great. We found the Tynan. As I feared, Ashford is dead. He was convinced that Marco Inaros was up to something, and I think he was right. I'm sending you what Ashford found. This is not my fight. Wow. It's gonna be your fight eventually, Kamina. I just know it. I just don't want her to die. I cannot lose Kamina Drummer. I mean it. Wow. What the shit? Oh my God. Oh, I did not think this was happening. Oh, this is gonna sting like a motherfucker. Oh, Philip. yeah. Please, I need to What speak. do you want? You left and discarded me like a piece of trash. I abandoned you and I'm sorry, but I loved you more than I ever thought I could love anyone. Then why did you leave? I don't expect you to forgive me. But I never stopped loving you. And I never will. That's why I'm here. I came to help you. You help me. I don't need any of your help. I don't want anything to happen to you because of what your father's done. I can help you before you get hurt. The ship that I came in on, I bought it for you. Take it and go wherever you want. And when you get there, I will send you all the money that you need. But please, just take it. Fuck you. Oh, I shit. know what you're going through. I don't need you. Everything my father told me about you is true. Don't go, Philip, please. Just listen to me. That was about how I would expect that to have gone. Um, but I am interested to see what happens next. Because that had to be his first reaction. But I don't know how she gets to him from here. Because he's going to be so fucking brainwashed by Marco. I don't know how she's expecting to pierce through that. I really don't. It's, it, it's almost impossible to do. Play. You can stop digging. They're about to reveal themselves. What? The container Monica was in. Sakai and I located the ship that was scheduled to pick her up. Belt of freighter out of Ceres, the Zamir. They think Monica stole the container. Mm-hmm. That's the way it's gonna stay. Oh. Because that information does not leave this room. I'll set up a party inside the container, and when they open the door, we'll take them and the ship. And let's make sure we have someone left to talk to this time. <laughs> wow. Who is 
rendering these graphics, they're incredible. Oh, here we go. This is the trick. Here comes the trick. Oh, I really do want to see you. Here comes Marco. What the fuck? What's going on? Thanks for the ride. Oh, sorry. Stop. Pricks. Secure her for flight. She's coming with us. Boss, she can't come. Do it. No! No! right now I know he's a victim of his father but fucking oh I hate flying monkeys you need to see this apparently when Marco Inaros was younger he was a slingshot pilot asking the watchtowers isn't going to happen Aww. why not as soon as my contact heard the name Marco Inaros he shut me down wouldn't listen to a word I had to say why so a cushy retirement is more important than preventing an attack. We don't know if it is an attack. We don't have enough proof. You know we're right. Part of this job is knowing when it's over and moving on. That's what we need to do. How can you move on? Felix, please. You're the only ally I have left. I've gone as far as I can. Oh, shit. Oh, you Nazi girl. But I just wanted to see how you're doing. New semester, new students. I've got a bad feeling, lads. Get them off the fucking planet. Work is different than before. But I'm still needed here. I hope we speak again soon. Oh, Fred Johnson! He's you do know, stuff. Marco, that throwing rocks at Tycho Aceris will do little to harm the innards. You still don't see it. I don't see what? Even our dreams are small. Uh oh. Uh oh, is it too late? Oh, Jesus, stop it with all this fucking suspense! <gasps> Shit, I knew it! Oh, no, 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 no! I'm sorry, I'm completely flabbergasted. I had a feeling it was going to happen. And it did. Um, and I think the title of this episode was perfect. I so hoped that we were going to hit all the bases and we hit all the bases. Um, that was a fucking excellent episode of television, let alone The Expanse. There's this sense all the way through it that I can't even describe properly of like growing tension all the way through this episode to the point where I was like jumping at nothing. Like I jumped at, what was it? I jumped at Bobby like hitting something in the room just to get the light to work to stop flickering. It was like the whole episode felt like something really fucking bad is gonna happen right now. Like any minute, especially around Earth, you know, and the, basically the moment we had that 
shot from Luna looking back at Earth. I thought we were going to see the, like, the asteroids hit it from Luna. Basically every shot from that shot, I was waiting for like, okay, here we go. So just trying to break down, break down kind of the, the principal stories that we had going on here. So we've got um, the Tynan, is it the Tynan? Um, Ashford's old ship, retrieved by the Polyam Belter fam. And Drummer's first course of kind of decision is okay that's fucking it we're gonna we're gonna get the time and work in um we're gonna bring it into our fleet so basically you have like three ships rather than the two ships that they've they've already got and we are gonna go and get the 20 million dollar bounty for killing or capturing marco and aros so i think and and we later find out that that's driven from her guilt that she didn't accompany ashford um, and her partner made a very good point, which was, you know, if you'd have gone, you'd have, you'd have died too. I'm not a hundred percent certain about that. Actually, I, I don't, because the thing is, and I mean, obviously, what's her face doesn't know the circumstances, but literally the only reason that Marco isn't already dead is that Philip happens to be on that ship. That was it. If there were two of them, it would have been possible, perhaps, that actually it would have been, it would have been two on two. And Kamina can still shoot. So either Ashford or Kamina could have shot Marco and just borne the consequences. Like, they didn't have to kill Philip. You know, they could have shot him in the leg, disarmed him some other way. You don't know what... You know, Philip's reaction to his father would have been to spray bullets. I get that. But, like, I still feel like... If they'd have had to kill him, they could have. And there would have been two of them to go up against two of them. So I think technically um, Kamina's right, but not right in the way that would have to have her feel guilty. Because no one could have, you know, it happened the way it happened. Um, and I st what part of what was so frustrating to me about that happening was that actually Marco didn't beat Ashford. He really didn't. Like, he got his ass handed to him by Astrid in, like, pretty short shrift as well. It was just luck. Like, he had a human shield. That Ashford wasn't in a moment ready to kill. If that would have been anyone else other than Philip, Ashford would have killed him. So it wasn't like Marco beat Ashford. It was that Ashford's conscience got him killed. You know, if Ashford was, you know not the not the gentleman that he is he would have just blown philip to pieces and then turned around and shot marco and he wouldn't have given two shits about it and tragically in this case it would have meant probably saved billions of lives potentially i have no idea what the situation is now with these asteroids if we've got one if we've got multiple no idea but I guess we're going to find out in episode four. You poor bastards having to wait for that first drop now into this. That would have been cruel. But yeah, I, I really, I really enjoyed that episode. Um, what else we've got going on is Bobby and Ashford have managed to kind of tease out that Salvatore probably is involved in the arms trade stuff because simply having that dinner and dropping a few questions meant that some of his little henchmen came and tried to sort Alex out. So that's that's proceeding nicely. But I like how already now we've got these stories starting to overlap because we've got the information coming from the belt and Tycho where we have Cortazar has been kidnapped again. <laughs> this poor guy, <laughs> all he wants to do is do his work. He has been kidnapped at gunpoint again by who we don't know. My money would just be on Dawes, his faction or something like that. But for fuck's sake, it's probably Marco and Sofater of Nick Cortazar at this point. So we've got that going on. We've also got the fact that when Kamina gave up the mission to get justice in one sense for Ashford's death, it meant that she passed on the information which we've been going on about for ages which was essentially marco's admission about the asteroids that would it would be a confession if you knew what you were listening for 
So a Vassarala now has that. Obviously, it's too late for the first one. That's already happened. But it could be possible now that they can turn those watchtower things towards... Away from Mars, basically, and to where the troubles are. And hopefully catch some, if not all, of these stealth asteroids. So that's kind of too... So, so, so it is still possible that Ashford could save a lot of lives here by having got that message out and hopefully that will bring some peace to Kamina that it wasn't you know his death was not in vain um and he died really saving lives in a way that was um consistent with his conscience and consistent with his principles so we can be proud of that yeah the whole kind of <laughs> trying to find you know, the people behind stealing Monica. And I just got to say again, I'm doubling down on it. I absolutely love the way that Fred and Jim manage Monica, which is just get the information she's got to give, go check everything out and go on. Don't engage, don't trade information with her. I actually found this like a really emotional episode and in ways I hadn't expected. Like I'd expected to be um, upset about Naomi and Philip. No, not just because it's sad in and of itself, but there's some kind of life overlap um, with that thing. But I found myself just angry, to be honest. I'm really pissed at Philip for hurting his mum that way. Not least because I know what it is to be abused by a narcissist. So I know his brain is just set against her and he can't see any way through it. And I just don't know how she's going to overcome. Goodness, you know, looks like getting on 20 years of... Um, being mind fucked um, by a narcissist. So that's, you know, we now don't know where Naomi is. I'm guessing that she's being taken to Marco and I'm really sickened by the idea that I really feel like he is going to try and get her back in via Philip. That that's the deal. That if she joins him, then that's that's how she gets to have her family but that's the only way she gets to have the family that concerns me so we'll see where that goes and yeah it's gonna be really hard not to go on and watch the next kind of episode of this now if i want to i really want to see you know the next bit the kind of aftermathy bit of that but but we'll see how the time then pans out but yeah superb 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 episode i fucking loved it I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. Um, and I have got to say before we go, that inc the way they actually finally created that asteroid hitting the Earth, I am so fucking... First, I'm impressed that they waited three episodes into this season. That's some discipline. Because I don't know, every I guess all of us thought that this season was opening. I literally imagined this season literally opening with like, the secretary general you know the kind of that off you know the big round table that they make all the big decisions on so i expected them all on that panicked you know like when the um remember the last time with the thing with the martian thing we had to shoot but it got a sh it got a shot out before and then it you know what i'm talking about i thought it was gonna be like that we were just gonna open the season boom there you're in the middle of it and then boom like the asteroids hit the earth but this has been worse because it's like you know it's coming but there are all of these in-flight storylines that are like what, what, where's Amos right now? Where's Amos? Is he anywhere near where he can get killed by this thing? Because I'm now fucking worried. Like Jim's family. We've got a Vassarala's family. That's before we even get on back to Nico who's probably still down there on the basic trying to help people out. There's just so many people we care about. And we don't know their status right now. Um, but not only that they... So it wasn't only that they waited, but it was also like, how many times have we seen an asteroid hit planet in a, in a TV show and a film? It's like, it's been done a lot. And, and you're already... I felt like I'd already seen it. I was just waiting... For, you know for the for the moment of impact because we've just seen it so many times so i can imagine a an asteroid hitting the earth 
two things I thought that they did spectacularly. One was the that build up with the shots. So we start, you know, in Mars and then we're at Earth and then we've got the call with Arjun and then we've got the thing in the space. You know, you're waiting. You're, it was pulling back from Earth and you're like, an asteroid is just going to go like this now. But then it didn't. It's bit, Haunting a Hill House does this really well too of like, or the, you know, the haunting of series does this very well is it is it creates tension all the time so you're always waiting for the other shoe to drop and something happens where like it doesn't drop it doesn't drop and it doesn't drop so you you actually let your guard down a little bit so you're tense but you're not necessarily expectant and then boom, it gets you and you just completely fucking lose your shit that's what I thought that they did really well here was that they created tension and tension and tension, but it's, oh, you know, there's no asteroid, there's no asteroid. And then they did it. So firstly, perfect timing. But secondly, that speed that they, so we don't, we don't see this like normally with the asteroid, you're going along with it and it's like, you know, and that's the only kind of shot you get and the earth is getting bigger as it gets closer, that sort of thing. With this, I just thought they did that so intelligently, where first he is just gone, has gone and whizzed past you. And then just from point of view of that lone fisherman on the shoreline there, you know, he's there looking for his mackerel, you know, he's doing his little fishing, and then you have the build-up with the because you know it's coming, and then you know, all these fucking fish start going along, and then you've got the almost you see it in the reflection you see his reaction i just thought that was so well done they just they they did it in macro rather than um because we already have a sense of scale we we've created the sense of scale because we're on earth everything we know is on earth so the idea of it being hit by an asteroid is already big and so what they did was made it very personal um and very intimate and I thought they captured like that's the, it was the silence that this just this ordinary day man's just doing his fishing and then <laughs> gone. That was so good. That was that was so good. I can, I just I love I fucking love this show. I just it's shit like that that just puts this show in a whole other category for me. Like it deserves to be up there with other with like the best shows because of stuff like this where that is not they created that spectacularly well and i and i i dread to think what awaits us now in the next episode because are there more asteroids uh how much of the devastation are we going to see and who have we lost those are kind of the big questions but yeah all just fucking brilliant I can, and i can't wait until the next episode so until then bye bye Thank you.